my dad was a tradie and my mum was a stay at home. So working class. Yeah, so, working yep. class. We had one wage, so quite often my mum would, um, you know, when we were younger and we'd go to school, we'd be like getting the bus one day, my mum would be driving us one day, and I used to be like, I don't understand, like, wh why can't you drive us every day? And what I eventually realised was that she'd be rationing out her petrol money, like, or whether she had money for a bus ticket that day. So I remember at a very early age thinking like, oh, that's exhausting. Mm. Like, can't we just drive? Mm. Um, so that was kind of like my first introduction to like how money worked. You know, can I get the bus or can I be driven to school? Mm. Um, talking about savings and that, I think the the biggest piece of advice I got from my dad was when I started working, he was just like, save some for a rainy day. Yeah, put mm. some away. And that's a great, great bit of advice to a, but to a 16 year old girl who wants to go out and buy the newest jeans, there's no, <laughs> <laughs> there's no sort of emotional connection to that. Like what's, what well, rainy day? I'm 16, yeah, nothing yeah, happens. Yeah, 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 well I'm invincible. Yeah, yeah, so I really wish he had have given me a little bit more, yeah. just a, a little bit more guidance like on that. Carrot. When I first started working, I got a job at the Melbourne show like selling tickets to rides and I get a big lump sum of money at the end and then I just go down to Chapel Street and I just blow it off. Mm. That, that was my first experience with money. But to be honest, it's completely absurd for a 15 or 16 year old to be paying, you know, $200 for a pair of jeans. Yeah. But I went to a school um, outside of my suburb in Maribyrnong. I went to Footscray City College where some kids were coming from wealthier families. So yeah. I was like, why can't I have those jeans? So. And um, I knew if I had to, if I wanted those jeans, I had to go and buy them because my, yeah. or work for them because yeah. my parents couldn't afford to get me those jeans. I got the Target jeans. <laughs> but that's my teen years, and if you tallied the amount of money I blew on clothes, you'd, it's obscene. But <laughs> obscene for a seventeen-year-old. I, I don't think you'd be alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, and yeah. I think that's the the norm for most girls. You have to think where nearly everyone's target market. You're kind of almost raised as a consumer, and it's um. It takes a little bit to undo that, but when, when you get a bit older and you realise how, how long it takes to earn that money or how hard it is to earn that money, you kind of think, actually, you know what, maybe I'll decide on the things that really do bring me joy and really do enrich my life and I'll reserve my money for that. And you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear Target tights, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to pay for guitar lessons because mm. that really brings me joy. Or, like, I'm, I'm really, really grateful that I grew up that way because, I mean, my partner, he he grew up in a family where, you know, they had a business and it was doing really well and he couldn't have wanted for anything else. He had every toy, liters and liters of Lego, like any toy, <laughs> any toy you could ask for, he had. And, you know, we talk about it now and it's just that's informed so many of the choices he made before we met and he's seen how I do things and he's like, I wish I had an upbringing mm. big like you because it helps you, um, you know, it drives you in a way. Give when I was about 19, I got my first full-time job and um, by the time I was 20, I, I got given a property book as a gift I think for Christmas and that's kind of what sort of started me thinking hang on there, there's a trick to this and I um I started putting away my money and I started going you know what and maybe I won't go out tonight maybe I'll stay in and um slowly but surely I kind of decided that doing all that going out buying the jeans was not worth it and there were there were more important things I could be putting my money towards. The amount of holidays that I never went on, like, yeah. I mean, I did a few little, little trips, like I think I did a boat cruise and I did Thailand, but my friends were all going to Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so have fun, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll like your Facebook pics. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I, n I never went because I had a bigger plan. Yep. And I think I was putting away maybe $200 a week, um, as, m as much as I could. And my partner at the, was an apprentice at the time. I was working and at uni, and we weren't earning a lot of money mm. at all. I think he was on seven dollars fifty on apprentice wages, like yeah, it was yeah, abysmal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we wanted to buy an investment property together. And I said, "I'm really sorry, but I'm going to have to confiscate your money." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he was on board, but um, but you know, how long? 
How long did it take to get on board when you said you're going to confiscate the money? Uh, no, Days, we- <laughs> hours, weeks? <laughs> no, he was, he was on board for it. And what, what I mean by confiscate, I just meant move it automatically to another account. So yeah. he wasn't left yeah. with decisions of like a beer yeah. or savings. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so we would automatically transfer our money into a savings account. And I think I, it took us a year to save up. We had 25 grand together. Um, for our first property when we bought Ballarat. In a sense, it, you know, we could have bought better in Sunshine. It would yeah. have made it easier for equity us. Equity would have grown quicker. Would have, grown would have quicker. been able to access that Definitely, equity. but I didn't have parent. My parents had bought one house for cash. Like, yeah. I, yeah. I had no, yeah. um, no, no one to ask. Group. No, exactly. None of my friends. Well, all my friends are in Europe at yeah. this point, so yeah. I had nobody <laughs> to ask. Um, I just had books yeah. and if the books aren't the right books, how are you to know the difference? In that time period, I continued reading. I think I'd read every book ever. And then um, the Armchair Guide to Property Investing popped up in QVD books. So okay. um, I bought that and then I realized there was another component to it was the growth. You know, mm. I was watching what Melbourne was doing and I'm just sitting there going, why hasn't my property gone that high? Mm. Um, and then I realized, okay, well, if we're going to do this again, we want something with a bit better growth. But I also don't want to repeat the same mistake of, um, you know, not maximizing our situation. So before I wasn't sure if I could take on such a high mortgage. Mm. Now I wanted to know. So I think that's where I sort of started realizing if I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it really well, I'll go see a professional or yeah, someone who does it for a living that knows more than I do. Yeah. And I think a big thing that got Aaron on board was seeing that it would all be down on paper and actually have something to aim for. So before we were just saving, mm. right? We'd never yeah. had an, a, a, target. a, a target a to hit or yeah. a bullseye. Now we've got a bullseye at every step mm. of the way. So it's so it makes it easier and it actually motivates you to work harder because it's kind of a challenge. Like, yeah, I love it. let's get there quicker. I always believed it was possible, but I also sometimes would second guess myself, like, am I doing the right thing? Mm. Am I making the right choice? Because I'm not only making the decision for me, Mm. I'm affecting Aaron's future um, as well. So I kind of wanted someone to validate what I was doing. Mm. Yeah. Girls who I sit next to at work who haven't even crossed their mind, I say, look at my property plan, it's amazing. And they're looking at the, de- I don't mind sharing that information yeah. if it's gonna help them. You know, yeah. I'm not embarrassed about my fa- financial situation. I'm not, well, you know, cocky <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I am proud, but the, the main thing is to, you know, when your best friend says, how are you doing that? I can say, this is it, have a look. And it kind of shows them that it is possible. Mm-hmm. So, and I think a lot of people mistake um, You know, when I speak to my friends or my peers about property, a lot of them are a bit um, confused because that's not on their radar yet. And and then sometimes I'll get a comment like, oh, all you think about is money. No, I don't think about money. What I think about is freedom. Like that's the end goal for me. And you know, money's just the means to that end goal. I think this is a big thing. And when I speak to girls my age or even girls younger than me, Um, They always think, oh, it's too hard to get in the property market. Mm. And although in retrospect, we probably could have went harder, could have bought a $400,000 house in Sunshine at the time, and we probably would have been better off. Mm. But at the time, it made sense for us. Mm -hmm. And there's always a way, like there's always a way to do it. If you think, oh, property is too hard, just start saving your pennies and find a way. If someone says no, you're talking to the wrong person. Mm. (laughs) Go find someone who will say yes. Well, you just have to think, like, I I didn't come from any place special. I've never earned more than $60,000 in my life. And here I am at 28 years old, gearing up to buy a third property. Mm. So if I can do it, just a a regular girl, you know, anyone else can do it. And I look back and I started at 21, 22. I wish I started at 18. Mm. So if you're 18, you're lucky. You're lucky you're hearing this now because you've got four years on me. Mm.